Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my complete Nilu guide. Nilu is a very unique character and the newest five star who is made to be built and played in a specific way by design and because of what her talents actually do. Because of that, Nilu is a pretty niche but quite powerful unit in the right team. And I do especially think that that power level will increase as future characters come out that she will be good with. But I will cover all of this in the coming sections of this video. Because of that, I'm going to break down exactly how you should be playing Nilu as well as how to be building her regarding your best artifacts, weapons, teams, and just everything you need to know about this character. Before we begin, I do want you guys to know that I did spend a lot of time testing Nilu before she came out on a media server to make sure I can give you guys the best information. And as always, I do stream most nights on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested. And with that being said, let's get into it. Alright, starting things off, the first thing we're going to do is talk about Nilu's abilities and talents, get into what makes her such a unique character, and then talk about her playstyle and how you should be using her. First of all, Nilu's elemental skill is this sort of dance attack that has two ways to be used. In fact, once you press your elemental skill, you enter the pirouette state that will start by dealing a bit of hydro damage based on your HP, and then you can do one of two things. You can either use your elemental skill three more times by just spamming your skill, doing three hits of hydro damage, and then after leaving a ring around you that applies hydro to enemies that will last even after you swap out. The second option is by using your normal attacks instead, which will be converted to hydro damage as well, and will change your attacks to being hydro, with the last one being this big swing as you can see. This infusion to your attacks will last eight seconds, whereas the aura that you get if you choose to spam your skill instead will last for 12. Now in general, the way you're going to be using this skill is by spamming your skill as you can swap off much quicker, you use your skill three times and you change characters for a supportive playstyle. Whereas if you choose to use her more as an on field carry or a DPS, then you would be spamming your normal attacks, but more on that in the next section. And a bonus piece of information I want to add is that your elemental skill, regardless of which way you use it, will actually save which attack you're on between your dashes and even if you wait. So for example, I just did two hits and then my third hit, which is the big one, even if I wait a bit and then I do it, it will still be that big hit. Moving on, your elemental burst is a pretty generic hydro nuke, except this one scales on HP. What it does is when you use your burst, it'll do AoE hydro damage to pretty much everything around you, scaling on your max HP and having a pretty good scaling. On top of that, it leaves a mark on enemies that will then explode after a small delay and deal another instance of hydro damage. This scaling is on your HP and is actually pretty decent if you build for damage. With that said, in practice, this ability might not be dealing the most damage because of the way your passive talents work and because you're incentivized to stacking HP instead of building more offensive stats like crit and hydro damage. With that said, what makes Nilu Nilu and the core part of her kit is going to be her two passive talents that I really want to get into as soon as possible. In fact, both of your passive talents are only in effect when all the characters in your team are Dendro or Hydro. Because of that, the real situations where you'd want to be using this character over other Hydro units is effectively going to be in these Dendro Hydro Bloom teams. In fact, what Nilu actually does is after you complete the third dance step of your elemental skill, you will buff your party members with the Golden Chalice's bounty effect, which will pretty much just make your blooms a lot better. What this effect does is first of all, increase the elemental mastery of all your party members by 100 when they're hit by Dendro attacks, and obviously blooms are considered Dendro attacks, so you can proc this reliably. And also the cores you create with the bloom reaction will be better than usual. They will be bountiful cores instead of the standard Dendro cores. What these stronger cores do is burst very quickly after they're created and will have a larger area of effect. These cores must bloom. They can't hyper bloom or burgeon, which is what you would get if you apply Electro or Pyro to them. And they're also going to obviously be Dendro damage. Now on top of just that, your second passive talent makes this even better as the more HP you build on Nilu, the more damage you will get to your bountiful cores. This passive only works with your bountiful cores, which means again, this passive also only works if you're running all Dendro and Hydro characters because you need your first passive to work first of all. And the way this works is that every thousand points of HP your Nilu has over 30,000 will give you a 9% damage increase to the bountiful cores that you create, which is honestly pretty insane given how much HP you can typically get. Because of this, investing your Nilu's HP by leveling her to 90 and stacking HP artifacts on her will typically give you the highest overall team damage because of how much damage increase you're actually gaining from this passive talent. While 9% might not seem like a lot, that's how much you're gaining for every thousand points of HP over 30,000 and a high investment Nilu can have anywhere from 50 to 70,000 HP depending on your artifacts and also if you have her signature weapon or not. And so because of that, that's a lot more damage that your bountiful cores are going to be doing on top of the fact that you generate a ton of cores in AoE and that all of them deal AoE damage. And so the damage increase is not just to one enemy, but every enemy you're fighting on top of every core you're generating. So it's just a very important passive to maximize. With that said, I will go into more detail in the build section of this video, talking about how much HP and other stats you need, but just do keep in mind that this passive is going to be a core part of your kit. Because of this, Nilu's playstyle becomes very straightforward. You're going to be maximizing the bloom damage of your team by building HP on this character, using your elemental skill in one of two ways, but for a bloom team where you use her off field, you typically just want to use your skill three times and swap out to then go into someone who can be on field, deal more damage and stack elemental mastery to proc the blooms for you. In fact, and this is very important, I typically recommend having another on field 
field character than Nilu. Not because Nilu's inherently bad on field, but because having another character that can proc those blooms on field is typically better since bloom is a reaction that scales on your level and your elemental mastery. So having a character who stacks elemental mastery will be doing much more bloom than your Nilu, who also needs to build HP. On top of just that, another reason why you'd want to use your skill three times and then swap out instead of staying on Nilu and spamming normal attacks is because when you do use your skill three times, you actually get this hydro ring around your active character that will apply hydro passively while you're on other characters, increasing your hydro application from off field and helping you play a more supportive role on your Nilu. With that said, you want to make sure your team has enough dendro application to constantly proc bloom and you want to make sure that you're not overriding the dendro aura. While this might be a bit more advanced information, basically the way bloom works is that when you apply hydro onto dendro, you can proc more blooms before removing the dendro aura on enemies. Whereas if you apply dendro onto hydro, it is much less efficient because then you're going to remove the hydro aura and then you have to use dendro again to reapply it onto enemies, which is just a more complicated way of saying you want to make sure that you have enough dendro application through either the form of, let's say, two dendro characters like the main character in Kole or Tsikhnadi or potentially the new dendro archon, Nahida, who I'm sure will make Nilu's teams much better. And that actually brings me into my next point. While Nilu is a character who works very well in her niche, which is against a lot of enemies because of how blooms work against a lot of enemies, you can not only generate more cores and proc more blooms, but each bloom you're procking is hitting more enemies and doing more damage overall, making this team way better in AoE and less useful in single target, but obviously still okay. With that said, Nilu does feel like she's missing a character who can apply a ton of dendro, especially from on field. So I'm sure future dendro five stars, like potentially Nahida or others that might come out probably in the next few patches, will surely make Nilu's teams a lot better as she does feel viable right now and has some teams where she's good, like what I'm going to show you guys in the video, but does somehow feel a little incomplete or at least waiting for future characters. Because of that, it's hard to evaluate her exact strength right now. And personally, while I do really like the character, I think future Dendro supports or carries will make her much better as on her own, she isn't meta defining by any means. With that said, you also have to consider the fact that she's a very niche unit. If you're pulling for her, you're basically locking yourself into a bloom team with a few exceptions that I'll cover, but typically that's how she's meant to be played. So do keep that in mind if you want to use her. With that said, there's very free to play friendly teams you can make for her that I'll cover in the team comp section, but it is still something worth considering. Lastly, I wanted to say that for her personal damage, you can run her in, for example, a vaporized team where you're effectively running powerful supports like Shangling, Bennett, and Kazua. And while I would typically recommend running like Child or Raiden in this team instead, if you pulled for Nilu and just want to use her like that and maximize her personal damage, you can. And an advantage she has over some other characters is that the way her elemental skill works and the internal cooldown that is shared between these attacks will effectively line up to where your big hit at the end will always be vaporizing, which is a pretty good thing on top of the fact that her burst, if you're building damage, can actually be a pretty decent nuke. Although I do want to re-emphasize that this isn't how I recommend playing her and would much rather use her in a bloom focused team. With that said, I will be covering both in this video to be as complete as possible, with my focus obviously being on her bloom teams, given the way her passives work. All right, now moving on, let's talk about how to actually build your Nilu. Starting with your artifact sets, there's a few options you can go for, with the main ones being supportive artifact sets. Those include the four piece tenacity of the Millith and the four piece of the deep wood memory set. The reason for this is because first of all, the tenacity of the Millith set will give you 20% HP on its two piece, which is good for Nilu as we saw she scales on HP and her passive will also give you more damage based on how much HP you have. So a good two piece in general. And then the four piece will also buff the attack of your party members by 20% every time your skill hits an opponent. But that said, you can also go for the four piece deep wood memory set as the four piece will decrease the dendro resistance of opponents by 30% for eight seconds after your skill or burst hits them and it also works from off field. This set is therefore a must have for your team because bloom is actually considered dendro damage. So you really want to make sure someone on your team has the four piece deep wood memories. While this set can therefore be used on Nilu, it could also be used on one of your dendro characters specifically who will also benefit from the two piece that gives them dendro damage bonus through their kit as well as just their blooms. So the deep wood memory set should be on someone in your dendro team. It can be on Nilu, but it doesn't have to be as long as someone uses it. Because of that, I recommend either four Millith or four Deepwood on your Nilu. But if you don't have any of those sets, you can mix and match two pieces like two piece tenacity of the Millith with another two piece, like perhaps a set that gives you elemental mastery, but I don't like it as much as a more supportive option. Lastly, if you do choose to use your Nilu as an on-field auto attacker in perhaps a vaporized team, then sets like four piece lava walker or elemental mastery sets like either Gilded Dreams or two pieces like the EM sets, Gilded Dreams or Wanderers with another two piece like Millith can also be viable. And the same can be said with the two piece heart of depth or the four piece Millith even as an on-field auto attacker as you get HP and will still buff your team. Now with the sets out of the way, what stats you actually want on your Nilu? Well, because of the passive talents that we saw earlier in the video, HP is going to be the main stat you want for your Nilu. Stacking HP percent on pretty much every piece is generally going to be more beneficial and more overall team damage than any other stat. Because of that, stacking HP percent is going to be the go-to on your subs
sub stats and also your main stats. And so because of that, what this is going to look like is going for an HP% percent Sans, HP% percent Goblet, and also HP% percent Circlet. Now with that said, there are a few exceptions or other stats that can be good. For example, if you're running a Favonius Sword, which we'll talk about in the next section, having enough crit rate to reliably proc its effect is going to be good and crit rate will be something to look for in your sub stats. And Elemental Mastery can also be good if you are proccing reactions. With that said, for reasons that I explained earlier, it's typically better to stack Elemental Mastery on your other characters, have other characters that are going to be proccing the bloom with high Elemental Mastery so you can build high HP on your Nilu and buff them with that. Having to balance HP and Elemental Mastery on one character is less efficient than one character fully stacking Elemental Mastery and then having your Nilu on full HP to buff your bloom damage as high as possible. With that said though, you might still proc some blooms with Nilu, so Elemental Mastery is still a good substat. Lastly, flat HP is still going to be pretty good and Energy Recharge can be good, but it isn't that needed, at least in Bloom Team specifically, because when you're stacking HP, your burst damage isn't that high since you aren't building too many offensive stats like crit. I do also want to mention that you're typically running at least one, if not two other Hydro units in your team, so you don't even need that much Energy Recharge, even if you do want to use your burst. But it can still be a good substat, although stacking HP is still going to be what I almost always recommend. With that said, if you want to maximize your Nilu's personal damage and that's all you care about, then you can either go Elemental Mastery if she's proccing reactions, or if you want her swords inside of her skill to do a lot of damage, you can go for a Hydro Damage Bonus Goblet and a Crit Rate or Crit Damage Circlet, and this build will allow your burst to actually nuke and deal good damage, but it obviously is not as recommended, especially in a Bloom team, where building HP and using another character as your on-field auto attacker will be much more efficient. Moving on, let's now talk about what weapons you actually want to run on your Nilu. Well, as we saw, Nilu is a character who scales on HP and who also wants to help your team as much as possible. Because of that, supportive weapons are going to be your go-to, as well as her signature weapon if you choose to pull for it. Now, to start things off, I will say her signature weapon is going to be her best pretty much by far. With that said, the weapon banner can still be scary to pull for, as this sword is not usable on too many other sword characters because it gives you a ton of HP, so other swords like Jade Cutter or Mist Splitter can be better for your account and more worth your primo gems, but for Nilu specifically, the key is going to be very good because it gives you a ton of HP percent on its stat, and then an additional 20% from its effect, also buffing your team's elemental mastery based on your HP. In fact, you'll gain 0.12% of your max HP as elemental mastery on your Nilu, and this happens when your skill hits an opponent. This can stack up to three times, and when it is fully stacked, you will increase the elemental mastery of your nearby party members by 0.2% of Nilu's max HP for 20 seconds. Because of that, you're going to effectively buff your team's elemental mastery, so increase your bloom damage, while also increasing your Nilu's HP by a stupid amount, as you can see, 86% total, which will also increase your bloom damage, so just a really good weapon for Nilu specifically, but a very niche one as well, so keep that in mind if you choose to pull for it. With that said, it's not a weapon that you need. For example, the Favonius Sword can be a good supportive option, as it gives you a lot of energy recharge, and also an effect that gives you energy to your entire team when you do crit. While Nilu and a Bloom Team doesn't focus on energy recharge that much, the effect giving energy to your team is going to be very relevant, especially with high energy cost supports. You can also use other weapons like the Sacrificial Sword or the Festering Desire if you have it, and the Freedom Sworn can be good for Elemental Mastery and an effect that buffs your team, although keep in mind the buff isn't as relevant in a Nilu team in general because it gives you attack percent and normal charge and plunge attack damage, which isn't as important as, for example, Elemental Mastery that the Elegy for the End can give you on another character. Because of that, her weapon options are pretty limited. Like, yes, you could also run the new sword that just came out, but this is a sword that gives energy based on your Elemental Mastery, so I'd rather use it on someone like Kazuha. So in general, she doesn't have like the most versatile weapons, so I'd recommend using what you have in terms of supportive weapons like the Favonius or Sacrificial, or using the key if you choose to pull it. Lastly, I want to say that what restricts certain team comps is the fact that you need a healer, and while we'll cover this more in a later section, this can make it more difficult to run characters like, for example, Ayato, because you'd rather have a Hydro Healer like Barbara or Kokomi, which means you can technically run a healing sword like the Traveler's Handy Sword, which I don't even have because I think you get it from like a chest or something, so I literally don't have it. Lastly, for personal damage, generic crit weapons like Jade Cutter or four stars like Black Sword can all be viable, or even Elemental Mastery weapons if you are proccing reactions, and I do want to mention this in case that's how you want to play her, but again, as I've said in like every section, I do recommend the standard Bloom support build. Next up, let's actually talk about Nilu's Constellations. Well, I plan on keeping her at C0 because I mainly want to use her base kit for Blooms. I do have access to all six because this is the media server, but obviously this isn't my account. With that said, how good is every Constellation for Nilu? Well, let's talk about it. Your first Constellation is going to increase the duration of your elemental skill by six seconds, and will also significantly increase the damage of your third hit inside of your skill when you are using the normal attack variation. So your C1 does help enable a more on-field Nilu playstyle. Moving on, your second Constellation is actually quite powerful in a Bloom team specifically, as it will decrease the Hydro resistance and dendro resistance of enemies by 35%. As you are just casually proccing bloom, it will just basically give you more damage. So this is going
going to be a pretty significant constellation as decreasing resistance is always going to be very powerful. Moving on, your third and fifth constellation increase your talent levels, which for Nilu in particular are not that amazing, unless you are focusing on her personal damage and get something like her sixth constellation, which we'll talk about shortly. Your fourth constellation will give you some energy and increase your burst damage. And lastly, for Nilu's sixth constellation, you will gain a ton of crit rate and crit damage based on how much HP you have, 0.6% crit rate and 1.2% crit damage for every 1,000 HP for a maximum of 30 crit rate and 60 crit damage. Because of that, when you have 50,000 HP, you're going to cap out on this crit rate and crit damage bonus, effectively making your Nilu's personal damage a lot higher. Do also keep in mind though that if you plan on pulling for constellations, this personal increase in damage is not only going to be good for, for example, if you choose to run her in Vaporize teams, but it can also make her more of an on-field auto attacker, even in a Bloom team, even when you are proccing your passives. So that can be something to note. As you can see, the more constellations you go, the more Nilu will be enabled from on-field. I just typically don't recommend it without constellations. As I mentioned earlier, stacking Elemental Mastery on another character who will be proccing all your blooms will be more efficient than staying on Nilu and not being able to only build HP as you will also want Elemental Mastery. With that said, as a standard support in a Bloom team, the only real constellation that you can go for, especially an early one, is the second one as decreasing the Dendro resistance and Hydro resistance of opponents is quite relevant. But if not, she is perfectly fine at C0, assuming you build a good team around her. Now with all that out of the way, let's finally talk about how to build a Nilu team. This is an extremely important section because of how Nilu works with her passive talents, but also a pretty straightforward one. Nilu is a character who typically wants to be played in a Bloom team with only Hydro and Dendro characters. This is somewhat unfortunate because that means you can't run a grouper character, at least an Anemo grouper like Kazuo or Sucrose, that you would otherwise want in a Bloom team. But with Nilu, instead, you want to be running only Hydro and Dendro units. Now, I do want to start this section by saying that I believe these teams will get significantly better with the release of future Dendro characters like Nahida, who, again, we don't know much about officially, but she will probably be very good with Nilu as a Dendro applier. And the same can be said about future Dendros, like maybe Al Hytham or whoever else they choose to release. But I do also want to point out that I will go into more detail on these exact teams when those future characters come out. With that said, what teams are you going to be running? Well, first of all, you're going to pick between either running two Hydros with two Dendros or three Hydros with one Dendro. With the characters we have right now, I do personally prefer running double Dendro because of the way Bloom works and because of the fact that you want to maintain a Dendro aura on enemies so that when you apply Hydro to them, you can basically just get as many Blooms as possible without running low on Dendro application and by performing the sort of reverse reaction where you're using Hydro on Dendro instead of Dendro on Hydro, which allows you to get multiple Blooms before removing the Dendro aura and just makes it very efficient overall. <laughs> I don't want to go into too much details on that though, but in general, I do like running double Dendro. The only problem is that right now our Dendro options aren't amazing, so you do have to use some characters like Kole, who yes, can apply okay Dendro, but who doesn't have the greatest uptime and doesn't do the most amount of damage. With that said, in the future, like for example, when you get a different Dendro who applies more, it does seem like maybe running one Dendro character can be more feasible since you will be able to keep up with a ton of off-field Hydro. With that said, I do want to talk about the other elements of this team. First of all, the other Hydro character you want is typically going to be a healer since Dendro healers do not exist. Because that Kokomi and Barbara are going to be your two main options and yes you can run teams without a healer but Bloom actually does inflict self damage to you if you're in the Bloom's radius so you typically want someone who can at least heal a bit or running a weapon that can heal you. Because of that Barbara or Kokomi are typically the go-tos with Kokomi usually just being better. Having your jellyfish that stays on field and constantly applies hydro around it rocking those Bloom reactions for you is very good. In this team you're actually going to be stacking elemental mastery on your Kokomi as you can see I have over a thousand with an elemental mastery weapon and artifact set because she is the one who's going to be primarily proccing the bloom reaction. In general, in your Nilu team though, whoever is going to be proccing bloom should be the one on elemental mastery just to make sure you get the most value out of it. I do also want to point out that you can very easily replace Kokomi with Barbara in this team and make it a fully free to play team comp minus the Nilu of course as these three characters you get for free. For your Dendro options, right now we only have three and Dendro MC and Kole are the two best ones from off field. Dendro MC being the best and then Kole the only other option. Now you can use Tsikhnadi and I do think Tsikhnadi teams in a quick swappy style can work and I have tested them and they're okay. I don't like them personally that much because Tsikhnadi is number one, a single target damage dealer, whereas Bloom is much more AoE and also you need more field time on him. And also his personal damage is not that great without the catalyzed reaction. With that said, it can work, but he isn't my first choice. If you choose to run triple Hydro teams, there's many options. Now in this team, you won't be proccing as many Blooms, which is quite unfortunate, but you can sort of make up for it by dealing more damage on a Hydro support who actually has good scalings when compared to just a generic Dendro support like Kole, who who's just there to apply Dendro. Because of that, many Hydro characters can be used, like Yalan or Singchu, or even Ayato, and I do think off-field Ayato, using his burst for that Hydro rain that deals decent damage, has good passives, and has a good uptime of 18 seconds, can be good in a solo Dendro team, especially with future characters. And a similar thing could be said with potentially Nahida or a future character with Candice's 
versus C6 if you do have it. Some of the main things to keep in mind though are that you do need to make sure you have a Hydro Healer in your team as obviously there are no Dendro Healers. And then the last slot is going to be flexible, usually a Dendro option, but if not, you can go for an offensive Hydro support, assuming you can still proc Blooms reliably. Now lastly, if you want to disregard Nilu's passives completely and just run her as a Vaporize carry, like having her Vaporize with powerful off-field supports, you can. Now granted, it's not as good as other Hydro characters, like I'd rather use Child in this team or change the team to maybe a Raiden National. You can still use Nilu if you want to that way and build her offensively. This is a team comp that gets better with Nilu's constellations and is okay. As you can see from the footage on screen, it works, but it doesn't really work because of Nilu. It's just Shangling, Bennett, and Kazuo being broken. And then your Hydro on-field character being able to actually vaporize every third hit of her normal attack string, which is a pretty big number, as well as having a burst that nukes. With that said, I don't recommend this playstyle, but if it's something you want to do, you can just because she's Hydro. And so for all those reasons, I personally recommend running a Bloom team, especially as of right now with two Dendro supports, but you can also go triple Hydro. With that said, this is the team comp I'm going to be using for my Nilu showcase in floor 12 right now. It does perform very well in AoE. That is the niche of the Bloom teams being very strong in AoE. So you will see that this team will actually perform well and will look very powerful. My Nilu's on almost 70,000 HP because I'm on the R1 signature weapon. Obviously, Constellation Zero with the four-piece tenacity of the Millilith and also level eight talents. With that said, I hope the guide was helpful and I hope you'll enjoy the showcase. Let's go. And so yeah, Nilu's a very unique and niche character, but one that I personally find fun to play and who will only get stronger as future characters come out. For a bit of random information that I wanted to throw somewhere in the video, but don't really know where, I'll just say it right now. Make sure the character proccing your bloom reaction is level 90 and stacking elemental mastery, Kokomi in this case, and also do make sure that you're not applying too much hydro so you still have dendro aura on enemies. Like literally sometimes with Kokomi, you just kind of have to sit there and watch the enemies or swap your dendro supports and running like a sacrificial weapon on them can actually help. With that said, I hope this guy was helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.